Kabbalah Session 1 The word Kabbalah derives from the Egyptian word Kab, meaning body, and the Arabic word Allah, name of God. Thus, combining these terms, Kabbalah means the body of God. The real meaning of this is recommunion of the kingdom and the crown, the bride of God and the Lord God, the body and the mind, etc. Here we see the Kabbalistic Tree of Life diagram as it was modeled by McGregor Mathers and his early 20th century group, the Golden Dawn, who were committed to the study of Kabbalah. We see in their model the modern arrangement of the ten Sephirot spheres and the 22 paths marked as tarot cards. This is the most familiar arrangement known now, but it is only the latest of three versions of this diagram. Prior to the Golden Dawn, the Tree of Life diagram was shaped in this arrangement, designed by Isaac Luria, the blind prophet of the Sephardic era. Some say it was during this era, when the Zohar was first written down, that the Tree of Life model originated. However, before the RE arrangement was ascertained for the diagram from Luria's interpretation of the Zohar, the previous interpretation of the diagram kept, related to the oral tradition of the Zohar, was this, the Gra arrangement, reportedly designed originally by Rebbe Shimeon Bar Yochai from the same era as the Bahir. As we now see, over time the Sephirot on the middle pillar have slipped further and further down. This process has long been recognized by Kabbalists as the breaking of the vessels, where the term vessels is Kelepot, which literally translates as shells. However, the middle way of Kabbalah is the path of recapitulation. And so we wind back the clock to find the original meaning for the slippage of the middle pillar Sephirot and the shattering of the shells. The original model of Hakabala was two cubes. One was above and so the other was below. When viewed at a 45 degree angle from above the joining in the middle of the upper and lower cubes corners, the tree of life diagram is seen with its 10 points as corners and its 22 paths as edges. The descent of the central pillars Sephirot symbolizes the implosion of the twin cubes above and below of Hakabala to form a model something like this, a hypercube, or one cube nested inside another. This 2D image depicts a 3D model of a 4D shape. This 4D shape has some special qualities, namely that the inner cube and the outer cube have the same volume as one another. When rotated to a 45 degree angle, the hypercube looks like this, a tesseract. And just as the nested hypercube is a four space shape, the tesseract or hypercube at antipode represents the fourth dimension beyond three space the invisible direction of time. Here is where we begin our analysis of how Kabbalah as it looked prior to the creation by God of this universe. Measured within the impossible octogram in the center of the Tesseract, we find this model depicting an overlapping cluster of ten spheres shown in blue, seven in green, and three in red. The ten spheres in blue represent the ten sephirot, originally called ten emanations of nothingness in the Sefer Yetzirah. The seven in green represent the seven Olympic dignities, the so-called planetary cameo. The three red spheres represent the upper three worlds of Kabbalah, but more importantly are formed from a twisted orbit seen from the side of the twelve signs of the zodiac. Here we see the ten sephirot in black, the seven planets in green, and the twelve signs in three loops in red. The surrounding squares are derived from the geometry of the interior of the tesseract. 
In this we see only the spheres. Outermost of these are shown in blue, the ten sephirot of nothingness, wherein the Hebrew word for nothingness is ayin. With these ten sephirot are the seven Olympic dignities or planets, shown here in red, and within them are the twelve signs of the zodiac, shown here in black. The seven planets are in the realm of Ein Sof, meaning limitless nothingness, and the twelve signs of the zodiac are in the realm of Ein Sof Or, meaning bright, limitless nothingness. The first of these models we will examine apart from the others will be the ten sephirot of nothingness in the outermost layer called Ayin, or nothingness. Here we see the spheres of the sephirot only, and the paths of the tree of life, the edges of the cube of Hukbala, are represented here as only dots where these ten spheres intersect. Subtracting Ayin, or nothingness, from the complete model of all the spheres overlapping, we are left with the seven planets, here in red, and the twelve signs of the zodiac, shown here in black and as before, arranged in a circle rather than along a three-looped edge. Because the grouping of traits by these sums is prehistorically ancient, many names for each have been given throughout time. Here we see the labels of these names, color-coded as in the last diagram, arranged by ten aeons of two thousand years each, beginning at the bottom in 18,000 BC and concluding at the top in 4000 AD. Knowing these labels will enable you to understand the meanings of the corresponding names over time. The next layer beyond the Kabbalistic Four Worlds model, which we will discuss in the next session, includes the seven planets of Ein Sof, Limitless Nothingness. To comprehend Limitless Nothingness, we would need a measuring device that would needfully fall far short of estimating the true depth. To this end, we find the ancients applied the seven classically known planets of antiquity. Subtracting that layer from our model, all we are left with are the twelve signs of the zodiac, occupying the layer of Ion Sof Or, or Bright Limitless Nothingness, sometimes also called the Primary Clear Light, associated with Yilem, the Buddhist concept of that which preceded the beginning of all being. We see here Aries is labeled at the top, Cancer to the right, Libra most below, and Capricorn to the left. This model can be read around clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how it is meant to be used as a measure. The Kabbalistic attributes of the twelve signs of the zodiac include the twelve sons of Jacob who became the twelve tribes of Israel, as well as the twelve apostles of Christ the Messiah. However, later, Gnostic attributes were also assigned to the zodiac signs and seven planets. The Gnostic rendition of the twelve zodiac signs of Ayan Sahar was as the twelve archons, or authorities. They understood the seven planets as seven powers of these archons, occurring along bars between the archons when they are arranged as a circle like the zodiac itself. The Gnostic myth of the Archons is that each rules a span of 2,000 years, an aeon, and that they are 12 shards of a single shell that shattered when it fell from heaven. They call this original shell Yaldabaoth, or Samael, meaning the blind. The myth is the Yaldabaoth, the Demiurge, created the four worlds of Kabbalah, and was the father with mortal Eve of Yadhevade and Elohim, the twin gods over good and evil. In the next session we will discuss the four worlds of Kabbalah, and in the third session discuss the Kabbalistic Tree of Life as it appeared to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden.